Welcome back, everyone. I'm Guy, and this is Chapter 2 in my Master Plan tutorial series. If you haven't gone through Chapter 1 yet, I recommend doing so, as I've covered some basic elements that we are going to be working with this session. Today's feature is designing our first tactical encounter, and all of the fun crafting that goes with it. So let's get our Keep on the Shadowfell project open. Now we are looking at our blank campaign, which is sorely lacking in plot points. The handy quick menu on the right hand side is ready to help with this by suggesting some things to accomplish. When we are more experienced, we can use the help menu, but I'd like to walk through setting up our map region first. Up at the top, select Projects, then choose Regional Maps. You can also see that the shortcut key for this screen will be F3. We loaded up Winterhaven region last time. If you don't have Winterhaven region saved, you should probably go back and watch the first tutorial. So select the map, then click on the Edit box up top. This screen should look pretty familiar to you as we've been here once before. Since I'm recording video and want the biggest possible picture, I'm going to maximize the screen. This can also be helpful in adding a location because you get a better picture for yourself. Now we're ready to add the location. Double click on an area that fits the description in the On the Road Cobbled Brigands setup section. I estimate it to be about here. I'm going to fill in the full name and set the category. Hmm. You can see from the list that there isn't really an appropriate category for this location. I'm going to type in the word encounter to create a new category. Hit OK when you are finished. Now our map has a little white circle on it. When you hover over it, it turns blue and gives you a description of what is there. We are done with the regional map screen for now, so you can click on the OK button, then close. We've arrived back at our original blank canvas. But now that we have a location set up, we can start adding plot items. Looking at our quick menu on the right hand side, we'll choose the option Select an Existing Map. We'll choose our Winter Haven Region Map from the map box and select our On the Road option for the location. We are now in Map View. From here, we can click on the Brigands location, then choose which option we need from the right hand side. This is a combat encounter, but that is not what we'll be choosing. We're going to get started with a generic plot point first, so click on Create Plot Point. This window is the Plot Point Editor, and we can adjust several settings. Right now, the most important are going to be the details for Dungeon Masters only, and the read aloud text. Go ahead and pause the video and enter in the data. I'll do the same. Now that we've put in our text, our screen should look something like this. If you looked over the PDF, you've realized that the read aloud section is split into two parts. This is a bit of a headache to do in Master Plan, but I found that using our HTML tags will help alleviate this problem. I've made each of the separate read aloud section headers bold. With text in hand, we are ready for the moment you've all been waiting for, designing the combat encounter. Click on the Game Element tab at the top, and we'll get a list of the things we can add to this encounter. Many encounters have several of these options, but for now, we can click on Combat Encounter to pull up a blank combat encounter screen. Click on the Encounter Builder button, and we'll actually get to the meat and potatoes of this. Master Plan helps us plan our encounters very well by giving us useful information. Down at the bottom, we can see tips for the XP ranges and the level of monsters we should be including. All the creatures we add to our campaign, and any other campaigns, will appear on the right-hand side. I've added a creature ahead of time, but yours is likely blank. Now is probably a good time to fix that. Click on the Tools button at the top. Then select Add a Custom Creature. We'll take a second to go over some of these fields. The first page is pretty simple. We're looking at name, level, role, and information about the creature, followed by some basic abilities. Next is combat statistics. The important thing to note on this screen is that Master Plan has tried to figure out the default values for you. If for some reason the monster has different stats, adjust the sliders next to each to give it a different value. Powers is the next tab over, and it's also blank. Fill in the monster power by clicking on the Add button. Make sure you fill in these powers are equal to the same as it is for the kobolds. The Auras and Damage tab are not applicable to these monsters, but Auras are for creatures that have a constant area effect around them, and the Damage tab lets you add things like damage resistance and regeneration. The Details tab is where you fill in the smaller details about the monster, such as adding the Dark Vision that all kobolds have. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can actually see a Tactics section, which is useful if you'd like to add tactics for a specific monster, such as listed in the Monster Manual. And the last tab allows you to add a picture. 
This isn't that important to all people, but sometimes it can be nice to have a visual, especially if you're dealing with a monster that no one's ever heard of before. Time to pause the video again and let you fill in your monster. You get extra credit if you fill in all three. Welcome back. Now let's see how you did. Your screen should look similar to mine if you added all three kobolds. First, let's double look on the kobold slinger to see what the stat block looks like. While pretty close, it looks slightly different to the ones in the PDF version. This is because Masterplan is more up to date and has actually converted the creature into Monster Manual 3 format. Your monster layout might differ from mine slightly, but we'll take a look and see some differences we had to adjust for. Close out of this window, and then click on the Edit button again. The first page was pretty easy to deal with, but combat statistics needed to be adjusted. The Fortitude, Reflex, and a Will Defense all needed to be dropped by two points. Your screen should look like mine. There are a couple things I want to point out on the Powers tab that will help you with monster design. If you look at the Kobold Slinger in the PDF, you will see a circle around the sword and bow looking icons on both dagger and sling. This should indicate to you that these are basic attacks. Double click on sling to edit that power. You can see that the action section has the word basic attack in it. We set this up by clicking on the action button and then selecting basic from the usage list. The ranged option also throws some people for a loop. When you click on this drop down menu, you will see lots of powers with an N next to them. That simply is indicating that you should replace the letter N with the correct range. Special shot is an interesting power because it's more of an enhancement to the creature. There are a number of ways to display this, but I prefer to make it into a trait. Double click on special shot, then click the clear link next to the action button. This will change the button to read not defined and will make the power into a monster trait. The Copal Dragon Shields actually did have a resistance I was unaware of. Let's fix that now. We set resistances by editing the Dragon Shield, clicking on the Damage tab, hit the Add button, and fill in the correct fields. Simple as pie. You can see that the experience points accumulate at the bottom of the encounter builder, and Master Plan will indicate how difficult the encounter is. Since I've only added one of each type, this encounter is pretty dang easy. We use the plus and minus buttons at the top to increase and decrease monsters. Decreasing a monster to zero removes it from the screen. Let's put four more minions and two dragon shields. Now Master Plan has decided this is a moderate encounter. That seems just fine, but we are lacking a tactical map for our tactical encounter. On to the next step. You've probably already guessed that we add a map on the Encounter Map tab. Go ahead and click on it now, then hit Select Map. Since we already have the map picture from our PDF, click on the Import Map File button and find the correct image. The white lines that show up are the Master Plan Grid. We need to get this to line up with the Wizards of the Coast map, so we have to count out the squares. I'll save you some time by telling you it's 15 squares wide by 21 squares in height. You've also probably noticed the grid doesn't line up perfectly. Don't worry, that's actually not your fault. It's because the Wizards of the Coast map has extra space all around it. You can play with the numbers until it looks right, or you can do what I do. Cheat. I've actually edited the map and removed all the side space. Okay, that looks perfect. Hit OK to continue, even if your grid lights are still out of whack. Hit OK one more time, we'll be back to the Encounter Map screen. Go ahead and maximize the window to get a better view. You'll see that we have names of our monsters on the right-hand side. These are actually for you to drag and drop onto the map for placement. Place them just like this. That wasn't too hard, and we're in the home stretch now. Move on to the next tab, which is Notes. You should take the time to fill out this information in full. You can probably skip the setup box, because we already filled that in on the main notes. Time for another Chomsky cutaway. Now that we have entered all of our notes, we can sit back and admire our handiwork. Click on the OK button to take us back to the Map View screen. 
On the right hand side, we can see all of our notes for this encounter, plus a small map indicating what the combat will look like. Scroll down, and we can even see stat blocks for our shiny new kobolds. That was a lot of information we packed in today, but all very important to your growing expertise in the use of Master Plan. If you survive this encounter with only minor scrapes, then you're very much welcome back to the next. We'll be exploring how to set up a town in Master Plan, and all of the small details that come with it. You stay classy, San Diego.